Bachelor Father. Starring John Forsythe. Great. You look like Hard Day. I feel like Hard Day. Still on that bank merger. Don't worry. You great lawyer. You want a city's greatest lawyer. Dinner already. Uh, sit down. Sit down. Uh, favorite salad. Cucumber. Uh, entree. Frozen TV dinner. <laughs> Direction our label say can be eaten three minutes. Okay. Go. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What's going on here? Kelly eaten, Jasper eaten, I eaten, you only one not eaten. Well, why not feed me intravenously? It'd go much faster. Please forgive. Must get to night school extra early. Well, your hunger for education is likely to give me indigestion. My girl Susie just in row. Want to grab her seat next to me. Oh, all right. All right, I guess for one night, my stomach can play second fiddle to your heart. Where's Kelly? In room, hamming up part of Priscilla. Priscilla, you mean courtship of Miles Standish's Priscilla? Thanksgiving only come once a year. Mm, yes, that's right, Thanksgiving. School play go with it. You go with school play. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, not this year. They can get another director. Last year, I was overcome with sentiment. Uh, Thanksgiving, pilgrims, courtship of Miles Standish. Not this year. The great captain of Plymouth is so eager to win me. Why does he not take the trouble to woo me? Watch this. Watch how she works on me. Well, she can plead or beg or maneuver. I will not direct the play. If I am not worth the wooing. Hi, Uncle Bentley. Hello, dear. I'm certainly not worth the winning. So why don't you speak for yourself, John? Darling, I can't do it. Do what? I just don't have the time. Time for what, Uncle Bentley? I won't be able to direct your play. Oh. Anyway, I did more than my share last year. I directed it. I, I practically carried half the cast on stage opening night. You certainly did. So you just have to forgive me. I, I won't be able to help. Oh, that's all right, Uncle Bentley. We won't need your help this year. <laughs> oh? We already have a director. <laughs> Mr. Loomis, Ginger's father. Oh. Aren't you relieved? <laughs> yes, of course, I sure am. Bert Loomis, that's nice. Well, I, I suppose it'll all work out okay. I'm sure it will. Don't worry about it, Uncle Bentley. Uh, uh, darling, I think I did a pretty good job last year for an amateur. Pretty good. Very good. Well, then... Now, honey, please understand, I couldn't possibly have said yes. <laughs> but it does seem to me when a man has knocked himself out that he at least deserves the courtesy of being asked again. But you'd have said no. That's right, I'd have said no. But out of common courtesy, they might at least have let me say it. <laughs> Peter! Peter! You put vinegar in this salad. Vinegar never bothers you unless you're upset. <laughs> I'm relieved, darling. I, I couldn't possibly have directed you. Swell, Uncle Bentley. <laughs> Peter, you put vinegar in there. Vinegar never bother you unless you're upset. <laughs> oh, it's upset. <laughs> what is the matter with everybody around here? I'm not going to direct her play, and that's exactly the way I wanted it. Then why are you making fuss? I'm not making a fuss. Since you're not making fuss, why don't you finish dinner so I can go to night school? <laughs> and so Priscilla said to John Auden, why you not speak for yourself, John? What's the matter? Cat got your tongue? <laughs> I thought it was cute, Peter. Oh, it's nothing, Susie. Class, Peter's version was very amusing. But there is a serious side to Thanksgiving. To our pilgrim fathers, it meant sacrifice. To attain the four freedoms which you and your families are enjoying today. Class dismissed. Please, I carry your books home, Elga. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Shimmers, but Mr. Vedeci already asked me. That's all right. Come on, Elga. 
How about the hot fudge sundae? <laughs> Miss Gunter, Peter has a wonderful idea for Thanksgiving. Her idea. He just wants me to look good. It's his idea. Yes, Peter? Uh, let class do Thanksgiving play. Courtship of Myers Standish by Henry Wadsford Longfellow. Why, that's a splendid idea. But who'll coach and direct? I'm afraid I don't have the experience. No problem. My boss, Mr. Greg, aching to be asked. He'd do it last year. Such a busy man, and he'll do that? Well, you must have a sweet and generous nature. That's Mr. Greg all over. A born pilgrim. Now, how could you tell Miss Gunther that I'd be happy to direct the play? First, ask me. All right. You happy? No, I'm not happy. By what authority do you commit me? By authority, the same affection you have for me as you do for niece Kelly. You direct her play last year. Oh, now stop conning me. How many times I ever asked you for favor? Many a time I have one scrawny chicken in pot. And at last minute, you bring six people home for dinner. Do I say by what authority? Now, Peter, no. no! I stretch scrawny chicken with plenty rice, mushroom, and lychee nut and make sensational dinner. Now, Peter, And I... after dinner, six people try to steal me from you with more money. And foolish lawyer me say no. Now, please understand, I, I just don't have the time. That must be Miss Gunther. Miss Gunther? She's here to thank you for your sweet, generous nature. <laughs> Come in, Miss Gunther. Thank you, Peter. Good afternoon, Mr. Gregg. Hello. Uh, won't you sit down? Excuse, please. I have household duties. <laughs> I personally wanted to come and thank you. Directing our Thanksgiving play will mean so much to the class. Oh, I'm so glad you dropped in. You see, I was going to call you. As I was telling Peter, I couldn't... <laughs> Peter? Peter? Uh, would you vacuum later, please? Of course, a play like this without costumes would be quite flat. Very flat, of course. So when Peter told me that you'd provide the costumes... <laughs> well, you, you, you just can't imagine our excitement. And as if that wasn't enough. You mean there's more? Well, I call throwing in the sets quite a bit more. You're so right. Miss Gunther, there's a great deal to be explained. Now, first of all, I... <laughs> Peter! Peter! <laughs> Very sorry. Accidentally turn it on. Would you mind making some tea for Miss Gunther and me? And the best place to make it is in the kitchen, that room back there. Way back there. This is all very embarrassing. You see, Peter gets quite enthusiastic at times, and I'm afraid he's promised something that I can't deliver. Oh? It's a, it's a matter of time. Oh, well, the class will be very disappointed, but I understand. You see, it's a bank merger, and I have two very nervous bank presidents on my hands. You, you don't have to explain. Well, yes, but I do. Well, I understand. You see, th there's a lot of money involved. Oh, of course. And there are meetings and mountains of agreements to be drawn and, and, and conferences late at night with state man and federal man. I took economics in college. I understand your problem. Yes, but you don't understand at all. Good day, Mr. Gray. You tell her? I told her. You're not gonna direct? Of course I am. Like I always say, you born pilgrim. <laughs> Sorry, I'm late. Bank merger? Yeah. Just broke for dinner. They went to Romanoff. So why don't you speak for yourself, John? Bravo! 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 Brav
That was very good, uh, Miss Lee. And <laughs> now uh, we will hear from her coach, Coach Elga. She's gonna try. <laughs> Look at her face. Uh, she's gonna make her the Bella Pilgrim lady. Oh, no, no. Oh, cara mia. You're afraid to speak the English? Don't worry. I help you to rehearse your part. And in a few days, you speak it just like me. <laughs> <laughs> Look who teaches the English. Why, is the guy who got a D in English. Uh, teacher, please, you tell him who's a got a D plus. <laughs> uh, gentlemen, please, uh, Miss Jorgensen, I know you have a captive audience. Uh, would you like to read? Uh, I thank you very much, but better I play Indian lady laughing water. It gives me more time I take care of sister's babies. Such beautiful babies. I showed you pictures. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Miss Jorgensen. Some other time. We, we, we still have quite a bit to do. Thank you. And uh, now for the part of John Alden. Uh, John Alden, answer for me. <laughs> answer for me. I, I, I'm a comment. <clears throat> so I have come to you now with an offer and a proffer of mariage. <laughs> Very good, Mr. Detchy, very good. Uh, now, um, now we'll hear from Mr. Otto Schimmel. <laughs> so now I have come to you with an offer of marriage. For he was great of heart. Any woman in Plymouth might be happy and pr pr proud to be called the wife of Maya Sandwich. <laughs> My standish. Thank you, Peter. What's next? Egg salad. Oh. Um, thank you very much. You're all very good. But unfortunately, as you know, we can't use everyone. So here are my cast selections. Here's hoping. In the bag. We born to be Priscilla and John Alden. Just like turkey born for cranberry sauce. <laughs> Miles Standish, Otto Schimmel. <laughs> Laughing Water, Helga Jorgensen. First Pilgrim Woman, Agnes Cassidy. Second Pilgrim Woman, Tanya Wanowski. Chief Massasoit, Angus McAllister. Priscilla, Susie Lee. John Alden, Luigi Vedecci, <laughs> Indians, Gus Trankus, Chris Svensson, Sam Shapiro, and Peter Tom. Thank you very much, everyone, for auditioning. Peter, you did very well, and I'm sorry you couldn't be John Alden. I had to be fair and impersonal. Jinnah, be a good Indian. Come on. I'll drive you home. I go, but home no longer home to me. Just place to vacuum. <laughs> well, now, Peter, I had to be fair. You wouldn't want me to be accused of favoritism, would you? Come on, now, stop sulking. You've got a part. Some part. Indian. Well, that's a talking Indian. Some talk. All I say is, hug. <laughs> now, there's nothing wrong with one word if you know how to say it. Well, do you know that a, a big Western star has made a whole career out of one word? Yup. <laughs> I'll not have personality of yup. <laughs> All right, I'll, uh, I'll write a new line for you. What Longfellow doesn't know won't hurt him. The red captain of Plymouth is so very anxious, eager to win me. Why does he not... Morning, Uncle Bentley. Morning, darling. Take the trouble to woo me. If I am not worth the winning, wooing, I am certainly not worth the, the winning. So why don't you... Why don't you... Speak for yourself, John. Speak for yourself, John. 
Oh, golly, I'll never memorize this by Friday night. I'll make a fool of myself. Nothing to be afraid of, Niece Kelly. Easier to memorize long speech than one word. Not even word. I'll die. I'll just die if I get up there and draw a blank. I coach you, Niece Kelly. No John Orden backward, forward, and sideways. <laughs> he great of heart, magnanimous, courtly, <laughs> courageous. Any woman proud to be called wife of Miles Standish. Gosh, Peter. You make a wonderful John Alden. Glad somebody thinks so. <laughs> now, Mr. Curtis's bank shows assets of $36 million. Mr. Worthington, you have roughly $32 million. So the proportionate interest of our shareholders in this merger should be in accordance with these assets. Greg, you're not taking into consideration the value of my tangible properties. Yes, but... The secretary's out the lunch. Hello. Oh, yes, Peter. The other line I promised you? Oh. Yes, here it is. Uh, the, the Indian draws himself up and he says, Justice, you call this justice? Nay, it is a fantastic mockery of justice. <laughs> All right, all right, you can say Og, too. <laughs> Little extracurricular problem. Now, Mr. Worthington, as long as you brought up tangible properties, I suggest we turn to page 24, section B. That property along Elm Street, now we all know that's going to become a business section eventually. Well, that's a matter of opinion. We've had Elm Street appraised by Appleton, Simpson, and Sinclair. Hello. Oh, Miss Gunther, yes. Yes, I have a moment. No, 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 no. All I want the turkey to say is gobble, gobble. <laughs> Not gobble, gobble, gobble. No, no, just, uh, just two gobbles. Gobble, gobble. <laughs> Could we discuss this later? Well, goodbye, Miss Gunther. My secretary will be right back. Now, uh, where were we? You were on your second gobble. <laughs> I'm, um, I'm directing the courtship of Miles Standish in night school, and it's going on tonight. Uh, let's see now, uh, where were we? Oh, yes. Now, if you'll note the Greyhound bus terminal... Is that the night school at first and clock? Mm-hmm. Well, my cook had her heart set on being Priscilla, and you made her an Indian squaw, <laughs> and I haven't had a decent meal since. <laughs> Mr. Gray. Very convincing. Had me reaching for my scalp. <laughs> well, in another hour, another opening night. How are you doing with that line I gave you? Justice. You call this justice? Nay, this fantastic mockery of justice. <laughs> Not bad. Not bad at all. Mr. Gray, I still feel our best man for John Orden. But show must go on. I think it over. I'm ready to sacrifice myself for good of team. If only Sitting Bull could hear you say this. What difference? What part I play as long as you backstage cheering me on? I'll be there, I promise. Uncle Bentley? Yes, dear? I can't do it. I just can't do it. I'm petrified. Oh, oh come on now. Buck up. You look so pretty. And every great actress has opening night jitters. Remember, great tradition of theater. But, Peter, I can't. Show must go on. Uncle Bentley, you'll be there, won't you? You'll be backstage. Well, darling, I just promised Peter that I'd go You to... go with niece Kelly. Her need greater than mine. <laughs> Hello? It's Mr. Vidicci, our John Alden. He, he, he can't go on. It's the worst case of stage fright I ever saw. <laughs> Well, calm yourself, Miss Gunther. Don't worry about it. Peter knows the part backwards and forwards. Yes. Peter, what a wonderful break for you. You're going to be John Alden. 
Peter. Oh, Peter. Peter. Oh, oh. Peter, come on now, boy. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. You're... Come on, you're John Alden. Homer, Homer. It's your big chance. Can't do it. Go get some water. Come on. Come on now, boy. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, speak now. Speak John Alden's first line. Come on. Speak for yourself, John. No, 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 no. That's Priscilla's line. Come on. Justice. You called this? No, that's the Indian's line. Four score and seven. That's Lincoln's line. Any woman in England might be happy and proud to be the wife of my sandwich. <laughs> Here. Now try it. I pledge allegiance to the flag. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> what are you going to do? I don't know, darling, but he's going to be John Alden. But I can't go with you and I can't go with him at the same time. Uncle Bentley, you've got to go with Peter. You've just got to. You sure you won't mind? Of course I'll mind, but his need is greater than mine. That's my little pilgrim lady. Well, as the great man himself just said, the show must go on. <laughs> come on, come on. Come on, Peter. Come on, boy. Pilgrim just landed on Plymouth Rock. McNamnus. <laughs> Is he all right? It's almost John Alden's entrance. Scott, I'm afraid we're just going to have to slide him out on stage and pray. Now, is there someplace I can get some ice water around? But there's a cooler down the hall. Good, I'll get a compress, put it on the back of his neck. Ah, hold him up. <laughs> now, I'll be right back. Here, this may help. <laughs> Mr. Gunn. Shh. Mr. Gunn. For he was great of heart, magnanimous, courtly, and courageous. Any woman in England would be mighty proud and happy to be called a wife of Miles Standish. <laughs> well, how did that happen? How did you thaw him out? Well, I didn't. Susie did. Susie? Well, he said he couldn't get to first base with her. He did today. Mr. Gregg, never underestimate the power of a kiss. What's your nervous? Not me. Come from triantical family. Born in trunk. You make a much better John Alden than me. You mean that? No, but I'm a very good sport. <laughs> Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Thanksgiving means spirit of sacrifice. We owe a vote of thanks to Mr. Gregg. Without him, no play. Not even John Alden. Speed! Speed! It was no sacrifice. Believe me, it was a great pleasure working with all of you. True that our production was no... Uh, no theater guild production. If the audience didn't understand every word of it, it didn't matter. I'm sure they felt as I did, that the words not only came from your lips, but they also came from your hearts. Hey, here you have me making a speech. Now, come on, there's a punch. Let's, let's drink it. Uh, Mr. Greek is happy with us. We want him to know that we are happy with him. So I say, let's make him director of our Christmas play! <laughs> you make me one of eight reindeer, I quit. 